welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Management Qualification podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 6th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, study guide and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com. Hello, my name is Paul Neighbour and I'm with John Bolton doing Parallel Project Training podcasts on the APM Project Management Qualification and we're up to budgeting and... Cost management. Cost management, which I think actually most people get quite they're quite familiar with this. So a budget is different from an estimate because mm-hmm. a budget is an approved estimate effectively. Yeah, that's right. So your cost estimate evolves over time from the moment you start planning to the moment you get approval of the project management plan. The PMP includes a budget, and that's kind of the organisation via the sponsor saying to you, the project manager, go on, go and spend that money. Yes. And then that, that's not your money, but it's your project money. So you that could, that budget, that, that's right. Mm, so that you, budget you gets approved in, in, that's in, right. in some way. Most organisations will have rules about how that how that budget is approved. That's right. And they also might have, de- when you say they can spend the money, there's also probably rules around delegated authorities and, and procurement and all sorts of so, other things but it's 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 not going to be taken away from them yes. well it might be <laughs> yes. usually nothing true and yeah, absolute yeah. in terms of budget but there's other bits and pieces that people get confused about there's there's the budget then there's possibly contingency to deal with any risks that occur yes there's possibly a management reserve which might be money for stuffed down the back of the sofa yes. for rainy days you might also have a bit of tolerance around that budget yes. so the project manager might be allowed to spend a little bit more or hopefully a little bit less. Yes, and then there's profit. Otherwise, the decision is always made by the sponsor. Well, yeah, but we're talking about costs here, aren't we? Yes. Profit and fees and all that sort of thing. Let's not worry too much about yeah. that. Yeah. Let's just... This is the cost of delivering the project. Yeah. Yeah. And it does include all the managerial stuff. So it includes no, the cost of the project manager, any project office, so it's a direct, communications, direct computers, anything you need. Yeah. 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 So Good. the budget's the budget. And the way you normally do that is a spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. with each work package, with each monthly expenditure. You can drive out your programme. Pardon? So you can get that, drive out. You can That can fall out of your programme. You your mean schedule? schedule. Yes, and show my history now, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. You fall out of the schedule. Yeah. Um, but actually, a lot of people just do it as a standalone spreadsheet with each work package, yeah. uh, planned expenditure. So what it means is, as a project manager, I know how much each work package is going to cost me each, That's right. each month. And I plan plan to spend some money, and then over time you spend that money, and there are actual costs. And yes. then what you've got left is the difference between your budget and your actual. That's right. In simple terms. That's right. And that's the way it works. And so, any any variance is either plus or minus. So I might have a, a budget of, say, £150,000 to take a small one. Mm. And the next thing I do is I sign, I sign a contract. Yes. For a porter cabin. Yes. And I sign that on a two-year lease. Yep. And um, there's no break clause. No, can't and, get out of it. And it's um, £1,000 a month. Yep. So of my £150,000, I've now committed twenty four thousand pounds that's right so your dis- your available discretionary budget is now twenty four thousand pounds less hundred and twenty six thousand pounds <laughs> yes very good very good so a commitment so commitments are usually really useful to track because they tell you how much you how much flexibility you've got left in the budget how much is uncommitted yes and it also tells you what your um, escape costs are going to be. If you were to cancel the project... Yeah, it's how much you, how much you can't avoid. How much you can't Some avoid. Some call them sunk costs, don't they? Sunk costs, yes. Yeah, so the things you can't avoid. Yes. Mm. On yes. a mobile phone contract, if you, you got it for a year, 10 quid a month, that's 120 quid. Yes. Month three, you lose it. You've still got 90 quid with the sunk costs. Yes. Mm. That's right. So that's commitments. So um, the reason people do that is it tells them... How what? much they've got left? How much you've got left, basically? Because mm. mm. if you you can't overcommit your no. budget, it does get quite tricky as well. Because sometimes the commitment is an estimate of a commitment. You know, so it might include service charges, for example. You're yes. committed to pay a service charge, but you only pay estimated well, bills. Well, it's easy if you've got a fixed price contract. It's much harder if you've got a yeah, okay. okay. contract. Okay. But, um, but if it's you've still got a re- commitment. You, you've got if you, if your building's got a repairing lease, mm. you might end up having to replace the roof, mm. and you're committed to do it, but you mm. don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. You mm. with me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am. So, so that's a commitment. So that's a, a sort of forward-looking view of what that's right. of what I've signed. Commitments up for. are generally f- yeah. perspective. And then at the end of the month, we do, and most organisations do an accrual. Uh-huh. 
and an accrual is a recognition of the cost of the work that's been done. Mm -hmm. But you may not have seen the invoices yet, or that's you right. may not have recorded the invoices yet. That's right. So um, the supplier may be a bit... Or it may be your own people. They may not have done all the timesheets or something. Mm -hmm. So you have to make an adjustment. Mm -hmm. So you might have some um, actual costs, mm -hmm. invoices that you've paid, but you need to add a little bit more to those for the invoices that have not yet been received yeah and yeah. that's a, that's an accrual so most it's an accounting entry in accrual yes so i was just about to say most of that's done by accountants so when mm. you get your cost report well what we used to get you used to get your cost report and at the bottom was a, a load of accruals <laughs> and actually looking at the accruals was really quite interesting because mm. they would do all sorts of things to um mm. make the department look good <laughs> yeah and, but um, the, re the reason they ask the project managers though is because the project managers know you you would know if you've used you know some resources in the last month, and yes. nobody else will. Yes, it's in the plan, but you, you, the fact that they've done it is yes. is not obvious until the end of the month. Yes, so the accountants just want to know what what your liabilities are really. Yes, when, well, it's for when we start trying. It's because we want to we assess the progress. We can see the physical progress of the project, but we want to know how much we've spent to achieve that physical progress mm. and the finance system. Mm. needs to make an accrual mm. to to give us a fair true and fair representation yeah. of the cost yeah accruals are quite important especially if your cash flow is tight yes because you you know you go and get a load of invoices in month two that were incurred in month month one and at the end of month one if you didn't have accruals you'd be very flattered by your cash position yes so you'd think you were much better off than yes, you really that's were right. that's right especially on the revenue side yeah but, um, we'll talk about cost um so the next step normally in cost management is to do a forecast. That's right. So I now know what my budget was, how much I've committed, what I've spent to date, mm. and from there I can do a couple of ways of doing that. One, you can say how much work, how much do I think I'm going to spend mm. to complete the work, or you can just sort of you do You could a project it projected sort of mathematically forecast. somehow. What I do is just multiply it by the number of months. Divide it by, <laughs> divide it by four, <laughs> multiply it by 12. Yeah. yeah. So there's various ways of doing forecasts. I mean, in a way, your budget is your month zero forecast, isn't it? It is. But your budget never changes. Your forecast changes. Unless you go for change control. And what you look... That's right. But that's what I'm not worried about that for the moment. What you're worried about is a difference, a variation between that's your, right. your forecast and your budget. Yes. Because if you're forecasting massive over budget, yes. then you're going to be talking to someone more action. than you are. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's right. And if you're predicting under, yes. then that's probably good news. And you, But you can do that on a work package by work package bit. Mm. So you can look at each work package and say which ones are Well, if you need to, under. if you're more or less on budget, you probably wouldn't bother. Yes, it's true. Except the, de except the detail could be, Devil's you could have the massive, difference. you could have massive contra Fred entries. burning, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, if you've got a big project going down to work package detail all the time is going to get quite time consuming yes, in terms okay. of data and everything yes that's why you need kpis and traffic mm. rates but we'll come to that fantastic so um so that gives you forecast and i think the other part of budgeting cost management if we haven't got five already that's cash flow is cash flow so you can then predict what your what your cash flows are going to be so when you're going to make payments going in and going out and the one i always think you can add on is corrective action so you look at your forecasts you look at your variances against the budget and then you say, well, this this work package is vastly overspending, therefore I need to mm, rein in a bit. Rein in a bit, or go and motiv do some motivational speaking. Yes. The da the danger is that people sort of rob Peter to pay Paul, and they just end up with like building this big wave of problem. Well, the so point, they rob future money to yes. pay current bills, it's like a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> yes. Well, the point of this is to drive project management control and action mm, that's right. not to produce a report no that's right that's right so mm. yeah that's, that's exactly right i mean in your own personal finances if you if you're kind of predicting at the end of the month of a big overdraft you might not be able to avoid it but you might be able to do something to, to sort of ameliorate the problem like a bit going out for dinner at the weekend yeah like like <laughs> not make it worse you know yes. or you know try and you know do a bit of overtime or yes go and steal a watch overtime. or something yeah, sell it on ebay but do we, do we get overtime oh god don't <laughs> right and cash flow is where is the relationship between when money comes in and money goes out, isn't yes. it? Yes. So if you're in your own personal circumstances, you don't really want to be overdrawn because you're paying interest. And yes. on, a, on a corporate scale, that happens as well. Yes. So if a, if a, if you're funding a very big project without getting any return, you're having to probably pay some sort of interest on that. Yes. 
even if it's just money out of your own bank account, you're still yes. losing interest. It's still costing you. So the idea is that you can shuffle around your milestones, your payment milestones, to bring them early. Yes, that's right. So if you can get paid paid earlier as soon as you can, then the, you're reducing the problem and the extent of a uh, cash flow negative forecast. Yes, cash flow is important both for suppliers and um, clients as well, because mm. clients are obviously getting the money from somewhere mm. to fund the project. So. Mm. The treasury team, who we talked about That's earlier, right. are very interested in seeing your cash flow right. curve because right. they need to know when to put the money in the bank. Because mm. <laughs> to, to, they, right. they, they want to avoid, even though they're shuffling money out of bonds and stuff into the... They don't want to do it in a rush. They don't want to do it in a rush. They want and to, they, they don't want to end up overdrawn because it will cost them right. a fortune. That's right. They want, they, want to, mm. they want to go to the bank manager and say, yeah. I'm really sorry. Um, it's one of the big indicators where, you know, if you're ever on a contract and you... And you, you contractors are, are not turning up or your subcontractors are not turning up it could really be an indication because they they some of the some some businesses yes. run right on the edge yes <laughs> cash and they're, they're waiting to get paid by one customer before they can pay the subcontractors on another job yes, you know yes so cash flow yes. it's, and you shouldn't you shouldn't try and hang on to money really i think it's a bad principle you know it's 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 a good idea to be have proper terms agreed and you get paid when you should be when paid. When you should be paid. You know, you don't deliberately hang on to money. That's the voice of small business speaking. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who's our MP? Oh, we've got some very good customers. So. And some others. <laughs> Fantastic. Anything else? No. Great, good. Next one's earn value. Hey. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative. To order a study guide, e-learning, or a tutor-led course to go with this podcast, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com.